we found that we could eliminate lambda productions if we combined them with another production rule. And this suggests a process. Find a production where a lambda production might be used, rewrite, including all possible branches, and then lather, rinse, repeat, until you can't. Now, let's think about this a little more. Suppose we have production rules A produces B, C, and B produces A, C, or lambda. One possible lambda production is where we used B produces lambda after the first step. This means we'd expand our production rule from A to include A produces C. Now, do we have to consider a production like this, where A produces B, C, then B produces A, C, and then A produces B, C, and now we use B produces lambda after the third step? If we do, then we need to include A produces C, C, C as a rule, and we need to include other cases as well. Unfortunately, it's not necessary. Remember, it's unfortunate because solved problems aren't interesting. We incorporated the production rule B produces lambda in our production rule A produces C. So we could derive CCC by A produces BC, then that produces ACC, and then since A produces C, that can give us CCC. So we need only consider if we need B produces lambda after the first step. So let's take a look at a more involved example. Suppose L has the production rules. Let's rewrite the production rules for our language minus the empty string. So notice that since we could have the production S produces B produces the empty string, then the empty string is an element in our language. So the best we can hope for is to rewrite the production rules for our language minus the empty string. Remember, we only need to concern ourselves with the first step. So even though S produces A produces B, C could use a lambda production at this stage, we would take care of that when we use the lambda productions from B or C. So let's begin with S produces A, which then produces lambda, which suggests we need to include S produces lambda in our production rules. We could also have S produces B produces lambda, but that's the same rule. Yeah, you might wonder, do we really need to include it? Since we're trying to produce our language minus the empty string, and S is our start symbol, it might seem that this production rule is redundant. So we'll eliminate it eventually. So do we need it now? Well, let's see what happens if we keep it. We also have S produces AC, and then C produces lambda, so this produces A, but S produces A is already included, so we don't need to add it. Next, we have A produces BC, which produces lambda C, or C, and A produces BC, which produces B lambda, or B, and finally, and so we need to add three more production rules. In the original rules, we had no lambda productions from S, but because S gained a lambda production, we could have B produces AS, which produces A lambda, which is just A. The important thing to notice here is that if we'd previously eliminated S produces lambda, we would have not found this production. And what this means is we can't eliminate any lambda production until we've rewritten all the production rules. Our last rule can be expanded to At this point, any derivation that incorporates a lambda production can be replaced by a derivation that doesn't. So we can omit the lambda production and provide the production rules for our language minus the empty string. 
Now, while we can do this, this process seems inefficient. And in particular, we introduced two new lambda productions, which had to be incorporated into the other derivations. And so the question to ask is, is there a way we could avoid introducing new lambda productions? Let's take a look at that next.